going on folks? It's Mike here and in this lesson we're going to be talking about SDL2 and adding abstraction to our current code base. What this is going to teach you how to do is to write a cleaner code base for your SDL applications. It's going to be useful as we go ahead and build more advanced SDL applications. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about our abstraction. Then you're going to see me do something a little bit different that I've already written the code and I'll talk through some of my design decisions so you can see just how I refactor code. I think it'll be a value for you if you haven't seen something like this. So let's go ahead and dive in and talk about the abstraction first. So what do we have here? Well, what we want to do is actually build a class called SDL app. And the idea is we're going to move all the SDL related code here, SDL to related code, such as setting up our window, drawing things, handling events, and so on, or at least provide the abstractions in this particular file here so that we can write more of our application logic in the actual main. That is the stuff that you want to do in your game or multimedia application or whatever. So then on the other side here, what you'll do is you'll create an SDL app. Say it's called app, and then you'll just call things like app.handle events. And that'll have some parameter and perhaps call some other function here that will do all the things related to handling mouse and keyboard events. And then you'll also have app.handle rendering. And by handle rendering, I mean call a particular callback function that will do things SDL draw line, SDL draw rack, or perhaps create some of our objects. And I think this is going to open up a lot of our SDL applications for further expansion and overall just a little bit of an abstraction for getting started with STL. So with that said, let's go ahead and see what I've written and provided for you. And I hope you enjoy this lesson. I'm gonna go ahead and start taking the code that's on the right side for my main and applying it to the STL header app that I've created here. And I'm gonna start modifying the constructor and just pulling out a few of the locally declared variables and making the member variables for our new class. This makes sense because we're going to want to hold on to references to some of these things like the window or renderer. I like to refactor by putting an M and an underscore in front of them, just so that I know that they're member variables and that they're different from my local variables. All right, and now I'm going to go ahead and add a few arguments to my SDL app constructor. We could probably create these as separate member functions in the future, but for now I'm happy with this abstraction for my constructor just to go ahead and specify the window height and the width. Now I'll also need a destructor here and we're going to want to destroy things using the SDL functions. Again, we don't want to manually delete our pointers. We want to follow their C API and just destroy things the way that SDL recommends. So I'm going to go ahead and follow that pattern. Let's go ahead and create an instance of our SDL app, and I'm just setting that up in our main. And again, this is our goal that everything that happens in our program will just happen through an instance of the app and hopefully clean up our code. So the rest of the stuff that I've highlighted there is what I eventually want to move into our abstraction, or at least a big portion of it, so that the user doesn't need to think about it. And remember, this is broken up primarily in two steps, where we handle events and where we render events. Now I'm going to think a little bit about this event callback and if it should have any parameters like an event. Uh, in the end I'll get rid of it, but at least I was thinking about it there. And here's the render callback as well, which is going to handle all the rendering related functions. And then I'll just have a loop in our application that will be called basically everything in the event callback and the render callback. And I don't have to worry about the right order or the wrong order. That's just going to happen. One event will be called and we'll process that loop and then the renderer. Now eventually I'll need to store some functions to my callbacks and um, I'll implement that shortly. So there I am getting rid of the event here because I decided, well, you know, I don't really need that here. So I'm going to go ahead and just add my event loop into my event callback for now and then we'll get to refactoring that. Okay, and now we can actually see the render callback that's occurring where we're doing all of our draw related events. And again, we want our application to run in a loop, so we need the infinite loop that's going to be executing while our game is running. Now, while game is running, we probably want that to be a member variable as well so that the player can, or rather the programmer can use 
as part of our interface a variable or perhaps a function to stop or start our program. Okay, so now we've created an app here and we're going to call our run loop function. So at this point, this is what our application looks like, but we probably want users to be able to write their own update or render functions. So again, that's the purpose of the callback. So you're going to see me use a modern C++ feature std function. That's just a nicer way to work with function pointers. It's just a little bit cleaner. And that's how we're going to eventually set our functions here. So now I'm just going to have member variables for each of those callbacks that will be created. And on the right side, you'll see where I'm going to write a handle events and handle rendering void functions, where the user, again, of our API will be able to specify all of the event callback code. So you can actually see me move it back and forth here a few times just to simplify things. And then these member functions in our app are just going to be about setting the event callback and setting the render callback, again, which someone who's using our API is responsible for setting here. And again, that makes things nice and simple, and it makes our framework relatively flexible. And this is something many graphics APIs do, and it just makes things a little bit cleaner. It's fairly common practice. Okay, so now we can see that all of our code has moved over there. So our main application is cleaning up a little bit, and we're ensuring that things happen in the right order, where we handle events first, and then we render. And maybe we'll add an update callback or other callbacks later. So let's go ahead and set those event callbacks as shown on the right side of the screen and our render function is being passed in. And we need to create our objects first before we do anything. And I'm just going to go ahead and move SDL quit as part of our destructor for our app just to make sure that that doesn't get forgotten. Okay, so I do need to have the objects because they're part of the rendering function. We'll have to think about where they're available or if they're global is later. And this is where I start thinking a little bit about, or rather commenting, just the flow of our program here. And let's make sure that we include SDL app here. And let's give this a compile and start tackling some of these bugs. You can see that there's a lot of them, and that gives us something here to think about. So where to begin? Well, we have a few errors here. And let's see. Well, some forgotten libraries. That happens when you start moving things around, so we need functional to handle std function. That gets rid of a bunch here. And the next one that we'll take care of. Well, game is running. Remember we made that a member variable, so that should be m underscore is game running. And we'll go ahead and just comment that out for now. And let's see, let's take a look at m render callback, just a spelling mistake and get some more errors here. Okay, I'm actually going to comment out the collision code because that will become important because I want to recreate a previous lesson, but let's actually just go ahead and get rid of it for now and see if our application is working here. Now we do need to figure out what to do with this renderer here and how would we get access to it because that seems like something that we would want to get reference to, so we'll create a getter function for that and now we'll want to make use of it. Now here's where I have to make a little bit of a design decision. I'm just going to have a app here that's a pointer now. And what this is going to allow me to do is, in a sense, just make app global, uh, and then I can create it later on here. And for now, that's just one possibility. Uh, generally, we like to avoid globals, but it's just one pointer for now. And this will allow me to call the get renderer function in all of our draw code where we're trying to draw something and again, to a specific instance of an app that we're creating. Okay, so I'm just going to set that up for each of the times that we were previously requiring our render. And then it becomes clear that, well, for this particular app, we have one render for it. Now, if we try to compile again, we are going to run into some more issues here and need to actually um, Again, starting from the top here, think about some of the other areas where we might have issues. So I'm just going to move app so that it is within scope here. It needs to appear above the functions here before it can be actually used. And the buttons, well, those are referenced in both the events and the renderer. 
So for now, I'm just going to make them globals again, just to get things working here. And let's continue to try to fix some of these errors here. Mostly silly things that happen during refactoring. And app, we need to actually dereference it and call our member functions because it's a pointer. So we fixed a few of those bugs there. And now let me go ahead and just look at textured rectangle because it looks like there are some things that can be improved here. In fact, passing a pointer by reference and that's a little bit messy in our code. We usually can't afford to just make the copy of the pointer. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up in a moment here. In our renderer, we did wanna make a const function that's in the bottom left of your screen just because we don't wanna modify the renderer when we're returning that member variable, or at least that's not our intent as of yet. Okay, so at this point, I just needed a little bit of time to think and open up our texture rectangle here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start fixing the member function to just simplify it a little bit. So let's go ahead and look at the CPP and just pass it by pointer, which is just a pass by value, but it makes things a little bit easier. And we can actually see part of our program is running now. We haven't handled the collisions yet, we'll get to that, but it looks like we are in good shape. And at this point, I'm just thinking a little bit about, well, I really don't like those globals there. Those really are part of a app here. So each of our apps should just store the mouse positions. And even more so, I don't want the user to have to worry about getting the mouse state every time. So I'm just gonna automatically update that as part of our main game loop here. And that way we'll never forget to update them and the user can just call some getter functions to get the mouse X and the mouse Y position and they'll always be correct. Or at least whatever the latest is in our app that is returned. So again, you can see on the right hand side, our handle events is getting simpler in this way. We have less globals, we have less code to worry about, and we have some function with app get mouse X and app get mouse Y. All right, so just another build to see that this is uh, working here, as I like to compile early and often in my code. And we also need a way to end our application. And that's just changing the Boolean for if our game is running to false. And now we do that through a actual function. And that'll handle any sort of other initialization or, or cleaning up of resources if we need. So things are working here, and that's good news. And what I'm gonna to wanna to do now is go ahead and uh, think about how to clean up our renderer. Because I had the idea with our event where we automated a few things like updating the mouse positions, I probably also want to clear the screen as well as add a delay. Now we might add some helper functions later on to set what that delay is and eventually set a frame cap so that we can have a set frame limit for our SDL app and that will make sense. But you'll see as I start moving these things in here, our application really starts to clean up on the right side. The code that most of the time our client, which sometimes is us when we're building an application, has to write here. So I'm just cleaning things up a little bit here. Uh, a few errors, now that uh, we've moved these, we can just add mRender uh, or make that call directly within our app in each of our SDL render related functions that needed a render. So that makes that a little bit cleaner. And again, we can run. And at this point, we're almost ready to start handling our objects. So our textured rectangles, again, I'm gonna use the same trick where I just make those globals. And eventually we'll probably want some sort of factory or some other way to create objects through our app, but we're probably gonna need a better abstraction like creating game objects or some sort of hierarchy to do that. So let's go ahead and just use sort of a similar trick where we're gonna make those pointers and create each of the textured rectangles in our actual main. And by create, I mean actually allocate memory with them with new. So I just take a few moments here to start creating our objects and they need to happen after the app because they need the get render. And again, I'll have to think about if I'm happy with that app get render abstraction later on, but for now, this will do the trick. And because they're pointers, we need to make sure that we clean them up here and just make sure that I name uh, object one correctly and object two, just like what we previously had. Uh, and now that I've done that, I can do another compile here, see if there were any errors, 
just in my uh, instantiation, there's the actual allocation for the memory with new. And now that I have object two, it's a pointer, so I need to uh, dereference. And I'll need to dereference that argument for object one as well, just to make sure that I'm passing in the appropriate thing that the member function is expecting. It's expecting a reference to something that actually exists, so this will do the trick. All right, and our application is working. I'm able to click and unclick and see if things are colliding or not colliding. And this is just looking pretty good for our code here. So on the right side, it's significantly trimmed down the different pieces that we have here, and it looks a lot cleaner with the abstraction. Now, the last thing I want to start cleaning up is actually to create a implementation for our SDL app that is a C++ file that has all the code. We don't want to leave everything in our header. Uh, we want to get the benefits of separate compilation by having separate CPP files. So I've just got to take a moment to do this. Now, just as a design note, I will aggressively refactor like I did in this lesson here and just do everything in the header file just to get things up and running like you saw and make sure I have a similar build. But eventually I will want to do things properly and again get everything in its own place. Okay and with that I can now remove the code that's in our SDL app and that just takes a few moments here but again we don't want any of our implementation here. That is unless we had some inline functions perhaps but we're not at that point where we need to think about optimization that much. So there we have that. And I'm just going to add a few comments and sort of organize our code a little bit because we will return to this abstraction, again, perhaps refactoring it again. But you get the idea of having an SDL app here and why it might be uh, a good idea to do this. And we can see how it cleans things up. So here's a little overview. You can see the build script. I'm going to build it one more time. One more fix to have output here because that's what we're doing our implementation and our program is up and running and just like that we're in good shape here. Here's an overview of our main and I would like to say that it's much more clean and this will be something that we can much more cleanly continue on with in the future. Well there you have it. We now have an abstraction that we can further iterate on. It's going to make our SDL2 programs a little bit more cleaner. That is, again, separating the application logic from some of the other things that we might do related to just constructing a graphic scene. If this was way over your head, then feel free to check out some of my other videos, the SDL2 playlist or my other playlists for software design. So with that said, if you found these videos of value, please like and subscribe. And we're going to continue building off this series in a fun way, especially with this new abstraction. We're going to see how much power we have with SDL2 and continue learning. Thank you for your time.